Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Stuart, for inviting me to speak with you this morning. And thank you to all of you for getting up a little extra early to join me. And thanks for sticking with me through this little tech snafu. I'm like, I need my notes. <laughs> um, my name is Heather Hardison. I'm a letterer, illustrator, sign painter, and author of the book Homegrown. <clears throat> Homegrown Illustrated Bites from Your Garden to Your Table is an illustrated guide to growing and cooking your own food. It walks you through everything you need to know to start your own kitchen garden. It takes you through the four seasons of growing, harvesting, preparing, cooking meals from your own homegrown produce. <clears throat> Each season features an appetizer, soup, salad, entree, and dessert. And all of the recipes are vegetarian and produ produce forward. Um, the book sprung from my blog, Illustrated Bites, uh, which I started in 2009 after I finished college. And this was a point in time when I thought I was a total failure. Uh, six years ago, I would have never imagined that I'd be here speaking with all of you this morning at Google. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, <laughs> and I just wanted to talk a little bit about that arc um, of going from feeling like I was never going to accomplish anything to um, publishing my own book. This is how I did it, and so can you. I graduated from North Carolina State University, the College of Design, with a degree in art and design in 2009, which, if you will think back, was the height of the recession. And um, I came to the, I finished school and came to the crushing realization that the economy was awful and nobody gave a shit about the paintings that I did in school. Um, so I, I was, I was uh, you know, trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was applying to you know, hundreds of design jobs and all over the country. And this was sitting at my mom's kitchen table in North Carolina, just feeling really awful about myself. And you know, I, I decided, I was, you know, I'm going to just move to California and see what happens. You know, the most expensive place in the country with no money and no job. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And it was, it was fine, but you know. Uh, the first job that I got when I moved here was at a small French restaurant in Berkeley. Um, <clears throat> and they s served all seasonal local food. Um, and it was a really popular restaurant um, that would have these insane rushes where there was a line out the door and around the corner. And it was just a really grueling customer service job. Um, it wasn't what I trained to do, and, and I wasn't making any art. Um, at the same time, I was, it was really exciting because I was being exposed to a whole new way of thinking about food and all these new dishes. I was just getting schooled all the time. Um, I remember one of the, the chefs told me to stop calling the je dipping sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just learning a whole lot. <laughs> and uh, I... I I'm from North Carolina, and I grew up on a lot of uh, square frozen carrots and peas, and all the food came from the Food Lion, which I think this is actually the one by our house. Um, anyways, I just wanted to point out that they watermarked this image. <laughs> but I'm sorry, Food Stuff Limited, I snagged it. Um, but then I moved to Berkeley and, and got this job at this restaurant, and I was just it was blowing me away, all the new foods and produce. Everything was local and made from scratch. They were using all local purveyors from farmers that would come in and eat at the restaurant. And, and even 
they even had things like chanterelles foraged from the hills in Berkeley. I was like, well, I loved it. Um, so I totally turned into a foodie, I guess. Um, I was learning a lot at the restaurant. I was taking workshops. I was taking cooking classes and doing my own kitchen experiments, uh, making brewing kombucha, uh, making pickles and jams, and just like really getting into that. <clears throat> At the same time, I still wasn't making any art. This was about a year and some change after I finished school. And I really wanted to keep up a creative practice. So I gave myself a project, which was my illustrated food blog, where I shared all of the fun things that I was learning and, um, and all the new and recipes that I had tried. Um, it was a weekly a weekly blog and it was just a way to stay engaged and keep a creative practice. I worked on it in the evenings after I'd get home from my day job and um, it, was, it was a really good, it was a really good project. <laughs> At first no one cared. I think my only reader was my mom. Um, but if for, you have to suck before you can be good. Uh, these are some of my very early illustrations from that blog. I think this one on the left is actually from the very first post. Around the same time I started apprentice at, that I started my blog, I started apprenticing for sign painting at New Bohemia Signs. I wanted to keep learning and I knew that I needed to get better and master a craft. Um, so I approached them about getting an apprenticeship and I was really lucky in that Josh Luke was leaving the shop at the time and they had room, room for an apprentice. I, brought, I painted these really janky little signs for like lemons and coffee and brought them in and they could see that, well, that I was at least interested <laughs> and, and uh, gave me a chance. And so I apprenticed there for a year that was unpaid apprenticeship and I would go in on my own time and I would practice at home and over about, about a year in, they started giving me client work. I started bringing in lettering into my, own, into, into my own work, into what I was doing for my blog. And for, for a few, few years, I just had my head down making shit. I was working at the sign shop, I had day jobs, and I was doing my blog in the evenings. And over time, my work got stronger, uh, a few things, started getting passed around a lot and a few images would go viral. This was um, through Stumble Upon, which nobody uses anymore. <laughs> or maybe they do, I don't know. It was before Pinterest anyways. Um, and I started getting asked to draw things for money, which was amazing. I didn't think that was something that would ever happen for me. And just getting asked to draw for cash was awesome. Uh, this is the image that my editor saw. Um, she's it, uh, this one got passed around a lot, and she reached out to me about putting together a book proposal. Uh, this was in 2013. And of course I said yes. I was like so excited at that possibility. Um, I have a few thoughts on personal projects that I wanted to share. I think it's really, there's, there's this dialogue now that everyone should have a personal project to do the kind of work, to get the kind of work that they want. And that's definitely true. But I think it's really important to be authentic with your personal project and do what actually interests you. I think you need to not be concerned with what you think will be trendy or what you think other people will be interested in. But to your core, what is actually interesting to you? You know, it's personal. <laughs> um, this gives, will give long, longevity to your project. If it's something that you'll do whether people look at it or not, then you'll, you're likely to keep stick with it. And for me, I had to stick with my whoop, project for whoop. OK, OK. Whoop. <laughs> I, OK. I had to stick with my project for several years before it started bringing work. And I, that wasn't my intention to begin with. Um, okay, now to make a book. So my proposal sold to Abrams in 2013, and 
I was elated. I said, yes, of course. And they, they asked me if I would write it. And I said, yes. They asked me if I was going to develop the recipes. And I was like, sure. And of course, I was going to letter and illustrate it. And then they asked me if I would do the layout and, and actually design the book. And I was like, well, why not? Um, it was a dream project. Uh, I tried to sneak everything that I love into it. Lettering, drawing, cooking, gardening, bees, chicken poop. It was all in there. I, um, I was just like on cloud nine. I couldn't believe that this was happening for me. But what the fuck? Now I actually have to make it. I don't know how to do that. How am I going to actually do this thing? It was the largest project that I'd ever been faced with and definitely the longest term project that I'd ever done. Um, I said I could do everything, but I wasn't actually sure that I could. For instance, I didn't know how to use InDesign. Shout out to my sister and Anne Benoit who showed me how to work that thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had to figure out how I was actually going to deliver. Um, I have since been told that it was kind of crazy that I was doing writing, illustrating, and designing it. That's like three people's jobs. Um, and in retrospect, I don't think I would do that again. <laughs> but it was total creative control. It was completely up to me to shape what was in the book, uh, how it flowed, everything. Uh, now I had to make it all 176 blank pages plus a front and back cover. And how do you do that? Well, I'll tell you what, it's not really <laughs> that easy. I remember I had, um, around this, the time that I sold my proposal, um, I had brunch with my friend Katie, who had recently written and illustrated a children's book. And we were having brunch, and she con congratulated me. And then she was asking me when it was due, and I told her, and she, her eyes got real wide, and she was like, why aren't you home working on this right now? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I think it's going to be OK. I think I'm going to be fine. Uh, but I always think back on that conversation because she was so right. <laughs> Getting started is the hardest part. You have to figure out how you're, you're going to just begin this project. Anytime that you have a giant, giant project to do, whether it's a career change, you're starting a business, you're writing a book, maybe running a marathon, you have to figure out how you're going to start. Uh, you look at this long road ahead and you don't have any idea how you're going to get down it. Or it's like moving a giant pile of sand with a spoon. Um, but that's kind of how it's done. You have to like break it down into to small bits and figure out your framework. This was an early um, storyboard. You can see there are a lot of question marks in there because I didn't quite know <laughs> how it was going to go. Um, getting started really is the hardest part. Um, and for me, I had to get started several times throughout this project. Um, every time I was entering into a new phase, whether it was writing and, and developing the recipes and doing that research and sending out the recipes to all my friends to, for them to test it and, make, and see if it was any good or not or if my instructions were easy to follow or learning in design and watching Hello Linda tutorials and like getting haranguing all my friends and family that knew anything about graphic design to help me out. Um, there was just so many components to break down and do and the, the start is always the hardest part and you, but once you put your head down and you kind of get in it things start happening. Towards the end, getting started is the hardest part was my mantra for the day because it was such a long, grueling project. I was kind of just having trouble getting up and going to studio every day. So I would just tell myself, you know, getting started is the hardest part. And then I would get to studio and things would happen and the day would be done and it would be fine. And then the book was done. So that's a little bit about my process of actually planning it and getting it going. Um, but this is a little bit of, I mean, my favorite part of the process of doing the illustrations and lettering. 
Uh, all of the illustrations were done by hand, and as well as all of the lettering. Uh, everything started as a pencil drawing, which I then inked using a light box. <clears throat> and all of the inked drawings were scanned in and painted in Photoshop. This is uh, a before and after of the, the, the inked, or the pencil drawing and then the final. And, oops. This is a process GIF, but I don't think it's actually, mm, we'll just keep going. <laughs> oh, there it goes. I'll just like Vanna White this for a minute. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, yay. Okay. Uh, all of the type was hand painted. I wanted to bring in uh, my sign painting skills as much as possible into this project just because I wanted to. <laughs> it was like uh, I was trying to marry all of my skills and interests in this project and just use it as like a chance to showcase that. Um, it was, everything was drawn and painted at a scale that was a lot larger than you might imagine. As you can see over here, these are the originals that I painted for my chapter openers, also for sale. Um, and this was just a function of, that's a size that's really comfortable and quick for painting, for hand painting signs. Um, it's, it's a lot faster to paint uh, letters that are three inches than one inch. And um, so just to be able to do it quickly and efficiency, efficiently, I, I did it at that size because it's a really comfortable scale. And then uh, those were photographed and I brought them into Photoshop to color, which, oof. Uh, so that, that's the final from that first one you can see to the far left of these. <clears throat> and I did this process for all of the type that's in the book. I, I photo, um, the smaller, all the, the recipe headers, the chapter openers, these what's in season pages, uh, they, they all were hand painted. Even the subheaders that are in the book um, are made from, it's a font that is made from my painted letters. Uh, a f my friend James put, saw me actually painting all of them, and he was like, what are you doing? I'll just make you a typeface. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, James. <laughs> also, shout out to him. He just started his own type foundry, Oh No Type Co. It just opened this week. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I love the quality of the hand-painted type with hand-drawn image, especially since they are both from my own hand. It just marries really well and is really fluid. It, I feel like the hand-drawn qual quality of the type is, adds a lot of warmth. Um, and I worked in a lot of layers. You can see that this is a, a fi my physical layers of the tracing paper with the type, hand-painted type over top of the inked drawing, which were then brought in into digital layers um, that I worked with in Photoshop. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about my visual inspiration. A big inspiration of mine is vintage advertising and seed packages, especially early 20th century. This was the heyday of hand-drawn type and image in advertising. And these are some of my favorites, and this is just a small portion of some of the things that I looked at when I was um, sketching and uh, getting inspired by things. This image to the left, uh, that big central tomato is what inspired the cover image. I especially love old farm and garden ads. Uh, uh, these are early Farmer's Almanac. And if you've ever looked at old Sears and Roebuck catalog, they're so rich and amazing. They're just really the best. I try to look all, at all this and be inspired, but not slavishly copy it so that it is fresh in my own um, and not just uh, remade something that they did 100 years ago. I'm also hugely inspired by science illustration. Um, I spent a summer 
at the Cal Academy of Sciences doing scientific illustration for them, and that definitely influenced my work. And the main way that it influenced my work is learning to edit things out. Um, editing is so important. The power of illustration for science illustration, even in this day and age when we have amazing cameras and you can like swallow a pill and like take pictures of your guts or they like look like to take pictures at the cellular level. The reason they still use science illustration is because it can edit out all the extraneous everything else and just show what exactly they want you to see and show you the little components. Um, it, it takes out anything that's confusing and and muddies the message of what they want you to see. I mean, editing is so important. I <clears throat> come like editing down to the core of information and finding the essence is what will make an image really strong, especially if it's an image that's trying to share information. I think that's part of the reason that my illustrations from my blog kind of got popular and sh and shared a lot because it it was telling people how to do things, like how to peel a pomegranate or how to even uh, peel and cut an avocado, peel and slice an avocado, but it would show you in like three images and it was quick and easy to digest and it got to the point. Editing, editing makes things strong, made it stronger and more shareable. But then also uh, for my book at large, uh, you can't be too precious. These are some illustrations that I made and I painted the same as these and there was probably like 15 more like this that got edited out. I loved them. Um, they were going to be, the, it's the ingredient list that we're going to be the facing page with the recipe. Um, but we decided that it was too visually confusing and wasn't functional enough. And even though I loved them and spent hundreds of hours on them, they got chopped. And it made the book stronger. Um, it's like distilling, even if it's really painful. <clears throat> and so we decided to chop those and just use that same style because we liked it and brought it in just as these four uh, chapter openers. And that was a much more judicious use of pages in the book. And it was more concise. And it worked better. Here's some learnables. You can do it. <laughs> I, there's so much in this book that I didn't know how to do, or even just thinking back to getting started with my blog. Um, it would have been a hugely ambitious of me to even think that I wanted to make a book. But you know, stick with it, and you can do it. Uh, be authentic. If you're going to do a personal project, do what's true to you, but be authentic in all of your work. Because if it's phony, it's transparent. <laughs> Say yes. Um, you can figure it out. Say yes to things that are challenging and frightening um, because that's what you'll grow from and become a better designer or just a better person. Starting is the hardest part. Startest, hardest part. <laughs> Start, saying that is hard. <laughs> um, just put your head down and get in it and thing and shit will start happening. Figure out your framework. That'll help you get shit done. <laughs> editing, it's good. A friend of mine or my sister and her studio mate, I said, editing, it's good. And they're like, oh yeah, kill your babies. And I was like, what? <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, and design, you know, just don't be precious, cut things, get rid of it. Even if you worked on it, it's like, oh yeah, kill your babies. <laughs> In the end, you'll have a book. Yay. <laughs> That's my book. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.